All right, Bay Mang, today is Friday. It is March 18th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Before we get cooking here, it's Friday, like I said. Um, Miller Lite in a Friday, those things mix very well. Miller Lite mixes well with any day, to be honest with you, but there's something about those Friday beers that really just put you on a whole new uh, whole new level, whole new mindset. So make sure you're going Miller Lite tonight and uh, this whole weekend, really. It's a big weekend, like you're watching hoops um, you're, you're excited. Maybe your brackets well. Maybe it's busted. Um, whether things are high or low, you know Miller Lite's always going to be there. It's going to be sturdy. It's going to keep you in your lane, and um, you're going to be in a good. Uh, you're going to be a good spot. So, go get some Miller Lite. Miller Lite, excuse me. I always struggle with Miller. Uh, for <laughs> Miller some, Lite. Miller, like I, like I'm a Boston person. Um, but yeah, Miller Lite. Wherever you are, um, it's a beer that's brewed for taste. It's the original light beer. Uh, great taste, 96 calories. Go to MillerLite.com forward slash Redline to find the delivery options near you. Or, I mean, come on, go to any liquor store around here. Just pick it up anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Okay. True Crime Friday here with Allie. Allie, how are you? What are we doing today? Never better. We are doing a big one Is that one true, today. though? Or have you been never better? We're recording this on like a <laughs> random two, random one. It's actually it's 60, nice out. Yeah, it's true. Six degrees outside. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. In mid-March. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You were just trying to give a, you know. <sighs> what's up? To... Nothing much. Really, nothing's up? Like, you're trying to give a canned response, and I just dug in you too deep. You shot me I, down. I know. That was wrong of me. And you played the small talk right. I played the wrong. So, sorry. Glad you're never better. I believe you totally. Do you? Yes. What's going on? Okay. Today we're doing a big one. And I asked you before this and you said, no, you didn't know it. Off the name. Off the name. do this every week. Uh, I know. I know. We do this every week. To be fair, I also didn't know this one before I looked into it. I don't know how because it's it's an older case, but we are covering Harold Shipman who is why are you looking at me like that (laughs) i was sorry i wanted to address something too out of the gate i didn't say this earlier um a lot of people are giving me shit because and you might have noticed i probably should have told you this before we recorded last week (laughs) Mm -hmm. i was kind of like slouched down oh yeah so i had because we were virtual yeah we were virtual i had i had had a hernia surgery two days prior or the day prior i was doing that the next day so that's why like it was hard to sit up fresh out the operation yes exactly i was probably still on anesthetics and whatnot no, I was not disinterested. I was <laughs> not. I was on what sedatives? Is that what that's called? Sedatives. Sedatives. Mm-hmm. Sedative. Whatever it is. That's why I was like, and I'm still kind of leaning a little bit. So um, it's only a week after. So sorry, I just want to get that surgery. out. I was okay. just laughing. Also to you, I should have told you that as well because you're probably like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He was just laying he like he's in me? a laying like he's in a bed. But, <laughs> sorry. Continue on. It's okay. Um, I forgive you. That's a pretty that's a pretty valid reason to Thank do it you. Thank from your you. end. Okay. Harold Shipman. Mm-hmm. The most prolific serial killer known to date. Really? No, yes. he's not. Ask Google. I call bullshit. Okay. Well, I gotta look at the definition of prolific. Well, okay. <laughs> prolific, um, large numbers or quantities. All right, maybe. <laughs> I guess I was gonna like For some reason, prolific, like profile jumped in my mind and like high profile, infamous. And I was like, Like, bullshit. Like a Richard Ramirez. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like infamous would be. He's not the most infamous. Yes. He's the most prolific. Yes. Okay. Okay. My apologies. I'm fucking up big time today. (laughs) Okay. Um, He was born in Nottingham, England. So we're taking it across the pond. And he was born in 1946. So we're also throwing it way back. He became a doctor in his later years after he graduated from Leeds Medical School or Leeds School of Medicine in 1970. So uh, you and I also chatted about this before. This does remind me of like the Michael Swango case. Um, Has some similarities, kind of one of those like they got away with it because they were in a position where where people are dying anyways, right? So... It's not crazy for somebody, you know, to die around them. And that's why he got away for, with it for so long. So graduated from med school in 1970. 
1974, Harold took his first position as a general practitioner. This was at a medical center in West Yorkshire. And this is kind of where his, I sh- that's actually not true. I was going to say this is where his like evil started, but this I, I think was ingrained in him. Like this was always... Nature versus nurture, right? We go over it all the time. But I think um, stuff that happened in his earlier years kind of seasoned him for uh, maybe a bad path. By 1975, so one year into being a general practitioner, he was busted for forging prescriptions of pethidine for personal use. Mm. Uh, He was given a fine of 600 euros, and he was required to attend rehab for a brief period of time. Other than that, it's an opioid. Sorry, I had to look up what yes. pethidine was. It yes, sorry, true. it's an opioid. Um, which you want to know a fun fact? What's that? One time when I was there's usually no fun facts with opioids, but okay, continue. but this this one's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I wasn't a kid. I was younger. Mm-hmm. I went had to go to the hospital, and. So when they were like running whatever my vitals or whatever they do, they thought they found opioids in my system. Oh, really? Yeah. And my mom like came in the hospital and she's like, were you doing drugs? I was like, I don't even know what opioids is. Completely honest. I was like, I'm not sure what that is. I ate a Costco poppy seed muffin for breakfast that day. Oh, okay. That did it. You know how big the Costco muffins are? See, that's interesting because I knew that was a thing, Mm -hmm. but like I thought it was a myth as well. Like no. people who say don't do pop, don't eat poppy seed shit before like a drug test. I always thought it was a myth, so that's interesting no. to know that. How old Can you confirm? Then? I was I was in like high school, oh, so really? it was like totally viable for like a parent to think your teen is doing drugs or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was very straight edge, but yeah. my mom asked me several times. She's like, "What? What? What did you take?" I said, "Mom, the only thing I've took today is Tylenol." Yeah, but I did have a poppy seed muffin. Wow, that's I really thought that was a myth. So no, but, can confirm. Anyways. Back to the story. He was fined, had to go to rehab for a little bit. It was, you know, a blip, obviously a little slap on the wrist, but it didn't end his career by any means. I feel like this is also probably something that's probably more common than we would think for like medical malpractice of like using, you know, the facilities. Yeah, I would say. Prescriptions or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not that it's okay, but whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Harold continued his general practitioner practice in Great Manchester in 1977 after this, you know, little blip. Um, He continued doing his thing throughout the late 70s into the 80s. And then in 1993, Harold actually founded his own surgical practice. So he's, you know, in the medical community, he's moving up in this world. He's, you know, getting well respected in the community. In 1998 is when he really kind of hit his downfall or things started falling apart for him. Dr. Linda Reynolds expressed concerns to the coroner of South Manchester District, which is where a lot of um, Harold signed a lot of like death certificates. Obviously, he's he's a doctor. He has a surgical practice. Like I said, it's not you know, uncommon for people to be dying, but she noticed that there was a really high rate amongst his patients specifically that were, that were dying, that there were these death certificates were being submitted for his patients. And she was like, this is, this is just higher than normal. Something seems off here. She was the first person to be suspicious about it. Now, Linda immediately suspected like, okay, something's wrong here whether it's accidental or whether it's intentional like something is going on through this reporting of you know linda asking the coroner this was brought eventually brought to the police's attention they kind of looked into it um it would definitely later be said that the police just didn't do a very good thorough job of looking into it um but they somewhat looked into it they couldn't find any They couldn't find enough evidence to bring any charges, and it was, you know, it was dropped right there. Harold kind of continued. He was he was doing he was doing shady things. Let's just say there was definitely something that needed looking into, and he started to get on his last victim, who was Kathleen Grundy. She was found dead in her home in June of 1998. Now, Grundy's daughter 
took care of so Kathleen Grundy's daughter took care of Kathleen um, you know was well up to date in her you know in her finances in her day-to-day life whatever and Kathleen was elderly but she was in good health so it was bizarre that she just passed away then she passed away and Grundy's daughter gets a copy of apparently this will that was drawn up without her notice and it leaves none of her none of Kathleen's left nothing to the kids and everything was left to Harold the doctor very sketchy right there and yeah. it was a it was upwards of 386,000 euros like it was a lot of money and then all of a sudden the daughter sees this will which she didn't know existed and and or did not exist until the recent right before Kathleen died and she's leaving it all to the doctor like very very bizarre so Harold was kind of getting reckless at this point the daughter then brought this to the police and was like this is not right. Something's going on here. Um, this sparked a new investigation to be opened up into Harold. Grundy's body was then exhumed, and it found that there was traces of dimorphine in her system. But her cause of death was listed and signed off by Harold as old age. And again, she was elderly, but she was in good health. She had no reason for that morphine to be in her system. And her cause of death again was signed off as old age. So three things that are not adding up. September 7th of 1998, Harold was then arrested. So this happened in June. The police opened up an investigation. And by September 7th, Harold was arrested. This then triggered police into looking into other patients that Harold had treated previously and that had died. And they had no idea the can of worms that they were about to open right off the bat police found 15 more suspicious deaths of of whom all were patients of harold's a this like pattern began to emerge where harold would give his patients a lethal dose of morphine or, or diamorphine and quickly sign off on their death certificates he would then create this false medical report that they, you know, stating that they had died to poor health. They died to old age. Um, a lot of his victims were were elderly people. So very easy to kind of pass that off. It was like, oh, they were old. You know, they passed away. They, whatever. This was <clears throat> kind of his, I guess, MO, if you will. He also had a lot of his patients cremated. So he's then you can't go back and exhume a body and look at traces of whatever. Like, there's everything right there. All evidence is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Harold, on the other hand, proclaimed his innocence throughout the investigation. He tried to dispute the evidence against him. He kept his mouth shut. He would not comment on the actions with his patients. He, um, his wife, Primrose, would like the whole time denied Harold's involvement in any type of crime like I think in their whether Primrose knew about it or not at least Harold was in like he was not gonna bust he almost I think probably believed that he was innocent or was a very good liar each of these 15 patients all whom were women died between 1995 and 1998 Harold's trial began October 5th, 1999. He was, and charges were brought for all 15 patients against him. In, and we've seen this done different ways before, where when there's multiple murders or homicides or whatever, multiple of the same charge, a lot of times they'll try them separately or do whatever. He, there were charges against 15 of his patients dying, again, within three years that were suspicious now by january 31st of 2000 it was time for the jury to make a decision the jury went out and deliberated for six days which is a a pretty long time for the jury to deliberate but also they were deliberating on 15 deaths right so they had to go through each one and decide guilty or not guilty when they returned harold was found guilty for killing all 15 
that's a pretty big, I mean, not even like 14 to 1, all 15, all guilty. This, he also, you know, so the charges were he killed all 15, all via lethal injection of morphine. And also he was charged for forging the will of Kathleen Grundy. It, it was very apparent that that was not a, you know, valid will. He probably coerced her and signed, might have even signed off on himself, you know. Now, the sentence he was given ran, you know, pretty applicable to his charges. He was given 15 consecutive life sentences. And the judge actually specifically put in his whatever sentence or in his statements, Harold was never to be released, no matter what. So not even like no possibility of parole. He was like, literally, no matter what happens, Harold will not leave prison the rest of his life. I mean, he was a very dangerous person put in a position of power, right? And to be, you know, interacting with people in a vulnerable state yeah. or, you know, think about it. You believe what your doctor tells you, right? Oh, yeah. You, it's the most one-sided, like, For no questions sure. asked position there is. Right. So if they tell you something and you believe it or if they give you something, whatever, a very high position of, of power over other people. Although... Harold was tried for the murder of 15 women. It was actually su suspected that his body count was way higher than this. And I'm talking like way higher than this. Really? Like what? what give me, throw out so a So you number. said he that. got, so there was 15 people mm -hmm. that he was officially. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you say way higher, you say prolific. Like, obviously, I'm going to guess like. In the hundreds for sure. Um, I feel like I know of someone who is like a hundred. I'm going to say like one, 200. Okay. Oh, you're close. Right, right? Okay. Authorities believe that he was actually responsible for the death of around 250 people. Yeah, which is absurd, obviously. That's insane. an insane amount of people. 250 people? And the reason none of these other what 235 people were not brought to trial against him was they tried him for 15 he was found guilty of 15 he was given 15 consecutive life sentences basically they were like it's not worth the money the time and whatever to go through all trying all these other cases when he's already away for good there's no possibility of him getting released mm -hmm. like we're not going to other than you know making it official like officially giving him justice we're not going to accomplish all that much more um, you know, he's already away. A West Yorkshire detective, Chris Gregg, actually investigated Harold's activities further in 2001. Um, by July 2002, he actually concluded that he confirmed that Harold did actually kill at least 215 of those patients. Jeez. That's an insane amount. Yeah. And people. like they like confirmed and they feel good about it too. Cause you know, sometimes you get these wacky people who are like yeah. fasting as shit cause they want the spotlight or they want whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and this wasn't even like, so when Harold, you know, was arrested being tried, he kept his, kept his mouth shut. He was not going to say anything. So he wasn't one of those who like serial killers who was like bragging about them. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, there's so many more that you don't know about. Like, no, he was like, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Um, all of those, the 215 patients were believed to have been killed between 1975 and 1998. So a little over 20 years. Um, that's a lot of people in a very short period of time. It's a lot of people in any amount of time, actually. However, like I said, there was more suspicious deaths that are ascribed to him. Um, the majority of his victims, they were elderly women, relatively in good health, all of them just suspiciously passed away. Obviously, he was using drugs, um, lethal overdoses on them. And that was something that, you know, isn't outwardly, I guess, visible or tangible in a death, right? They weren't like beaten, broken, strangled. Like there was no physical signs of anything being wrong. They're like, oh, they passed away peacefully in their sleep, you know. It wasn't visible that something happened to them. They had to go back and look and do those tests. Harold had convinced a significant amount of his 
patient's families, once they had passed away, aka once he killed them, like I said, to cremate their bodies. So he would like push cremation on these families to destroy his own evidence, destroy his path, and then he was like in in the clear, so to say. It was obviously done as like a, okay, nobody can further investigate somebody's ashes. January 13th, 2004 is when Harold Shipman hung himself in his cell using his bed sheets from the bars on the window. He was found, uh, he, this was at Wakefield Prison, and he was found about two hours later and he was officially pronounced dead. Um, there was not much, you know, obviously being in prison, prison charge, whatever, there was not like, there was not a note left. There was not a big dramatic, and he didn't seem to be this like super crazy dramatic person. He kind of more was like fly under the radar. So hopefully I don't get caught. I'm going to, you know, go out quietly kind of thing. So he's no longer dead or he's no longer alive. Um, if he were alive, he would still be in prison. Um, he would also be very, very old, like 80 years, 80 something years old at this point um a couple of different reasons were speculated around Harold kind of inserting himself into the patient's will um into Kathleen Grundy's will was some people say oh this was his way of almost like a cry for help he wanted to be caught so he started being reckless and was hoping that it was you know his life was spinning out of control and somebody needed to stop him but he couldn't stop himself potentially it was also could have been like quick and easy way to get money right you're you're inheriting somebody's money they you know legally they signed off on a will you could play that game all day long now it was speculated as far as his motive it was speculated so Harold's mom who he was really close to and in his like teen years he was about 17 years old she passed away from cancer this was kind of a drawn out, I guess, pain or traumatic experience that Harold went through because she was sick for a long time. He saw doctors come in and administer her, administer her pain drugs to make her feel better. And so he was getting, um, I guess, the experience or he was getting exposure to, you know, m medical drugs and what, what they're doing to a patient and potentially I guess what they could do to somebody so I think that's where his kind of like that's where he routed of like whatever evil seed was already planted in him he saw this avenue of how to do that by flying under the radar and not getting caught for so long this is obviously like I said a very traumatic experience to a teenager he you know whether it he had that evil seed kind of planted in him when he was born, whether, you know, his mom dying like triggered something in him and he, you know, saw a, I guess, opportunity within the medical field to do that. Not sure. I mean, he was, like I said, obviously the most prolific. Uh, he's attributed to 250 people dying, which is, I mean, just off the charts. Absurd. Yeah, it's a ton. I mean, that's just, I mean, one is too many, but that right. many people is absurd. And it's, these doctor cases are always just like, I don't you, know how you stop it. You know what I mean? Like, it's right? fucking crazy that. Somebody has to catch on and look into it yeah. in order for you to be caught. It makes you think like, how uh, yeah. is that, are other people doing this? Like, what like, hasn't been caught? Right, what hasn't like, been? Just as this guy went out of his way to change wills and shit. Yeah. Um. No, I don't know. It's good because this one we talked about uh, Master Marino earlier with the mm -hmm. um, the dentist one in mm -hmm. the, the Jersey area. And then we mm -hmm. talked about Sw Swango, Michael Swango, a past case. We did the Illinois one. And it's just like, yeah, you just know it's coming. And it's like these poor people who are put in a situation where they're just extreme vulnerability, yep. especially being elderly, too, in this case. Like, you know, you might be elderly, weak, even if you are relatively in good health, you know, you probably may or may not have frequent you know visits or interactions with doctors and yep. multiple medicines and whatnot so you're gonna you know you're anybody's gonna believe their doctor when they tell them hey this is what you need or yep. you know if they're elderly they can easily be overpowered what have you it's just it uh, it's sick yeah it is sick very sick 
Um, but okay, Ali, thank you. Um, thank you everybody for listening. That's it for today. That's it for this Friday. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. We'll see you then.